This is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Cost and Schedule Risk Analysis Workshops. We're going to cover why conducting a CSRA workshop is important, uh, how to prepare for that workshop, and what to expect as a work product. So, but first of all, what is the Cost and Schedule Workshop? Well, it's a comprehensive review of a project that quantifies major potential uncertainties and risk factors to better manage the project, to deliver it on time and on budget, certainly an objective. It utilizes an Excel tool for capturing these uncertainties and the rationale and generates uncertainty curves and tornado charts internally using something called SIPMath, which I'll describe later. And it's useful in evaluating mitigation plans to improve the delivery schedule. It's necessary to perform both of these uh, at the same time, both the cost and the schedule, as an integrated workshop in order to properly represent the time-related cost implications of scheduled delays into the overall cost-risk range. I'm sure you've all experienced this. So what are the primary outputs of a CSRA workshop? Well, it's these two graphs. The one on the left shows the elapsed time for the project uh, as a cumulative distribution function. The x-axis is in the days, and the y-axis is the probability that you will achieve it in that, those days or less. So where the orange line is, is saying there's only about maybe call it five to seven percent chance that you complete the project in less than 1250 days. What's important about the orange line is that when you've generated a, a deterministic answer, it's probably down there at the P5 to P10 outcome. It's not at the red bar, red dot, which is a the expected value. Similarly, on the right side is the cost, and here I've shown the, the deterministic value as being around 250 million, also again in the, the P5 to P10 range. That's what most people experience, because both the schedule and the cost tend to be optimistic when you talk to the subject matter experts and ask them for a deterministic answer. Everything is going to be rosy. So why is it important? Cost, off, cost overruns are common in all kinds of projects. A 2004 study found an average cost overrun of 43%. 71% of the projects came in over budget, exceeding time estimates, and it estimated too narrow a scope We'll talk about that in a moment. And the total waste was approximately $55 billion per year in the U.S. alone. The Rio Olympic Games that were recently completed, the quote was from the Wall Street Journal, as cost overruns mounted prior to the Games, local organizers scrambled to cut expenses on everything from venue seating to the types of food served in the VIP areas. What is the cost or impact of changing the plan to meet the cost or schedule targets? And what happened to all these em empty seats? Why is it important? In recent years, many federal projects have had large cost overruns. For example, the cost to create the healthcare.gov website launched in 2013 grew from $464 million to 824 million. And the Veterans Affairs Hospital, currently being constructed in Orlando, has more than doubled in cost from 254 million to 616 million. And that was reported in September of 2015. And finally, the International Space Station, more than quadruple in cost from 17 billion to 74 billion dollars. Once we agree that CSRA is important, when should you conduct this? It's really appropriate at any time and is applicable to all projects. 
What do I mean by any time? Well, it could be early on when you're just conceiving of it, and it's be a simple CSRA, or it could be much later when you're getting ready to final investment decision. So conducting the CSRA early in the project and updating from time to time provides a perspective to the project. And we don't get locked into some overly optimistic schedule or overly optimistic cost estimate. It gives the project team to do a self-assessment and augment the CSRA as the project develops. The initial steps in preparing for the CSRA is we need to make sure that we have the right frame. So what do I mean by frame? Well, is the project we're trying to assess, is it simply the fuel and generation, if this was the value chain, or is it the whole thing, or is it just the, the generation and transmission? We need to understand the scope of what we're trying to assess and build. And we need to get very specific on what is the start date of that CSRA schedule. I may be in front-end engineering and I really want to do the CSRA from FID. And then what is the schedule objective? Is that when I'm ready for startup or is it the first loading of a ship or the first transmission? Whatever it might be, we need to get clarity on what those two points are. Then we need to ask ourselves, will the results of the CSRA be used in an economic evaluation? And if so, how? Because that may determine what kind of inputs we're going to need uh, to, to model the, the outcome of the CSRA. We need to know who are the subject matter experts. Who should participate in the CSRA? Should we have external unbiased consultants participate in the CRA? They may be very experienced in your, in your business. Review the deterministic cost estimates and schedule plans. So typically there are going to be some cost estimates and some schedule plans. You want to review those and then consolidate those into an appropriate number of higher level categories as might be needed. Typically we're going to want to have 50 to 100 if they have more than that. Early on in a project you may only have a few. Build the CSRA model with the costs and schedules identified initially assessed and then use the deterministic estimates as the most likely outcome or P50. The min and max or the P10, P90 will be addressed during the workshop. We also need to understand the schedule relationships as reflected in this diagram. So in this case front-end engineering has to happen before we can get permits. In the case of operation sign-off, we have to complete the pipeline, the integration, the top sides, and the platform drilling. We can't get signed off until we're ready to go. That means all four of those things have to be completed before we can do the operation sign-off. There may be multiple uh, requirements to be completed before the next task can start. So now let's talk about the characteristics of the CSRA tool. First of all, it's written in SIP math, which is a modeling technique and requires no macros or add-ins. And I might also add that the, the SIP math uh, is free. It's expandable for a reasonable number of activities and costs. So the CSRA workshop and the, and the tool are not trying to replace Primavera that might manage 2,000 different activities. The SMEs estimates we're going to propose should be estimated as P10-5090 for both the cost and the schedule uncertainty. We will then use the Meyerson distribution to sample the distribution. Let me be clear. What this means is you can estimate a P10-50 and 90, any three numbers, and the Meyerson distribution will fit them as shown in this S-curve. Some of the characteristics. It requires a user to code in Excel the schedule uncertainties of the precedence, leads, and lags, but this provides maximum flexibility with the tool. The tool has full transparency and transportability with anyone with Excel because it doesn't require any special software. It provides immediate feedback of the cumulative distribution for costs and schedule. This enables feedback on unreasonable inputs 
So let's say you put in an extra zero someplace. That would probably show up right away. Or possibly have some logic errors in the schedule. You make some changes and all of a sudden the, the two-year project turns into five years. You can also test potential mitigation plans on the spot. No need to wait overnight to go run something or generate graphs. It's there immediately for you. It enables setting a reference case for comparison with mitigation cases or other cases that you might want to look at. If you're interested, we can look at the live tool. We can talk about the dashboard, the structure of the tool, what, they, what do the inputs look like, the deterministic and probabilistic results, uh, identify some key mitigations and management attention, mitigation of the schedule, and adjust the uncertainties. I don't want to go through that now, but if you're interested, let me know. So one thing that the, the CSRA tool does allow you to do is to generate different types of tornadoes. Typically, the tornadoes are done deterministically. That means that the, the center line of the tornado is going to be reflected by the most likely or the P50 inputs. These tend to be those orange lines we talked about previously. And so, as a consequence, the tornado might look something like this. You'll notice it's very skewed. There's more downside, if you will, a longer schedule, a higher cost than reduction. And that's because I started from this very low position of a P10 or something. Where else can it go? It can only go up in cost. It can only go up in time. So what we'd like to do, and maybe to get a better idea of the impact of changing some of these things, we can do an EV tornado. And it tells us how much the EV of my S-curve changes if I'm able to control an activity to the low side or if the high value would, were to occur. You'll notice that these tornadoes are much more symmetrical in shape. So I promised you talking about what is SIPMATH. Well, it was conceived by and promoted by the nonprofit organization probabilitymanagement.org to conduct probabilistic analysis. It's uh, headed by Sam Savage from Stanford University. It's a modeling method using Excel, not a program like Crystal Ball. Um, and the advantage here is the Excel model is transferable to anyone with Excel, as no special software is required, and the model is fully functional. It's going to provide immediate feedback that we've talked about of the date results. As the data is entered and changed, the graphics are tailored to the user needs to include comparison of multiple alternatives. So you may have some special things you want to look at. Maybe there's some subsets of the CSRA that you'd like to look at and see those those particular milestones and the dates of them. You may not just be interested in the, the final, final schedule. And then similar to crystal ball and at risk, uh, many of the standard statistical di distributions are available from the SIPMath toolbar, which is free, remember. It's free. So I don't want to go through all these things, but there are forces for and against using SIPMath versus crystal ball are at risk. To me, the biggest one is for crystal ball, you're talking to $1,000 to $2,000 where the SIPMath is free. Uh, they're, they're somewhat interchangeable, but the other thing about uh, SIPMath is it's faster because it uses the Excel's internal data, database. So um, let me leave it at that. So if you want some more information, I would encourage you to go to probabilitymanagement.org, uh, download the SIPMath 3.0 toolbar. Uh, you can view some of the other instructional vi videos on the website. Uh, there may be links to other appropriate material. And of course, you might watch, to watch my videos on SIPMath on my YouTube channel. Just search for Brian Putt. And you can contact me at LinkedIn or brian at Thank you for listening.